Hello, good morning. It's Friday morning, and I welcome you to morning prayer and devotion today. Thank God for each of you joining me this morning as we get right into our prayer request. If you have a praise report you'd like to share today, leave that in the comments. Or if you have additional prayer requests here at the last minute this morning, we would love for you to share those with us as well. We ask you to remember Ron Fowler this morning. He has a herniated disc at L5 and is in severe pain and is waiting on surgery. Erin Payne has a tumor in her stomach and desires our prayers today. My good friend Steve Cummins is having surgery at 11 o'clock this morning in St. Louis to remove a cancerous tumor, and he's asking us to pray that that cancer is confined to just that one area and has not invaded or damaged any surrounding tissue. Timothy Axton is in Mercy Hospital having another of many reconstructive surgeries that have been required due to severe burns that he sustained in a gas explosion a couple of years ago. Uh, Judy Williams' daughter Jennifer is having sinus surgery coming up on September 22nd. And Pastor Mark Godby's daughter is in the hospital with gastroparesis and had to have a surgical procedure in order to drain uh, fluid from her stomach. Aubrey Vickery and myself are both continuing to recover from recent surgery, and I'm glad to report this morning that my telehealth visit went well yesterday, and uh, everything's going great with my recovery. We're asking you to pray for peace and comfort for the families of Cindy Lewis and Erling Copeland, who both passed away recently, and we're believing that God is going to continue just holding those families up in prayer, or as we hold them up in prayer, he's going to hold things together for them and help them to make it through this trying time. Our COVID-19 request this morning, Matt Perkins, Carmen's friend Corey, Brandy McCoy, Bishop Bill Jones, Teddy Hunsaker, Pastor Lance Wicket, Don Marchbanks, multiple people at Parkway Church in Wisconsin, and I've noticed that there have been churches in our area that have been affected and are at reduced capacity or uh, have even had to miss some services recently due to COVID outbreaks in their uh, churches once again. Stomach issues today, we're praying about Olivia, Terry Adams, Regina Marlin's granddaughter, Aubrey. Uh, Brenda's friend is having kidney problems. Jim Connor is awaiting a kidney transplant. Aubrey, Lorraine, and Lee all have kidney issues as well. Brother Virgil Pulliam's brother needs healing of his kidneys as well as cirrhosis of the liver and pancreatitis. Jamie Jo Shepard needs healing of her liver. Uh, we have many who are battling cancer, including Kathy Bloss, Philip Randall, Lydia, Christy Smith, David Harris, Michael Boland, Pastor Mickey Lewis, who has a basal cell carcinoma under his left eye that's requiring surgery, Alicia Piero, Diane Escher, Claire, Marsha Moore's friends, grandparents, John Fitzgerald, Kim Stinson, Kathy Burks, Dwayne Lewis, Robert Wicks, Terry Adams' friend, Dennis Phelps, Lisa Workman, Sylvia Larimore, Ari Bowers, Brother Kirk, Edie Percival, Dale Bishop, and Jerry Williams. Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker are going through cancer treatments as well. Let's remember these children and other children facing difficult situations today, including Abel Ray uh, with PKU syndrome, Tyler Lopez who has spina bifida, baby Elsie and baby Brantley with heart issues, Abram Page born with GNAL1 disorder, and Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach who both have juvenile diabetes. Adults with diabetes that we're praying for, Tim Workman, Cheryl Lachance, Emily Stanley, myself, Brother Pulliam, Terry Adams' friend Marsha, and J.R. Johnson. And it's been brought to my attention that J.R. also has an additional health problem that he's needing prayer for as well. Uh, my father and my mother-in-law both have Parkinson's disease. Russ and Tim Workman suffer with Parkinson's as well. Brother Marty DeLott and Brother Riley March need healing of multiple sclerosis. Lana Taylor, Leslie Pride, and Gerald Hudson have dementia. Uh, Grady Sappington's wife, Sheila, has vascular dementia caused by strokes and TIAs 
and also has late onset schizophrenia. Let's continue to remember Sheila and Grady and their entire family today. Tina's mother has not been doing well after having a stroke a couple months ago. Ron Buford is having issues with carpal tunnel in both hands and also problems with his blood pressure. Cheryl Chance and Kenny Prinzel have heart issues. Steve Sullivan's father has difficulty breathing and irregular heartbeat and is actually in the hospital at this time. Uh, lung and respiratory problems are also a concern for Robbie Northrup and Kendra Ortiz. They both have COPD. Cheryl Chance has some breathing problems. Bonnie Pulaski is requiring oxygen all the time due to her difficulty breathing. Uh, we have several with back problems today. Pam Poyman's daughter Jenny has osteoporosis of the spine and hips. Carol Dixon's pastor, Britt Moore, Tammy Lawson, Terry Adams, James Graham, and Michael Parrott all have back issues as well. Baby Macy is a premature infant, has been in the NICU for many weeks, and we continue to pray for baby, baby Macy. Donna Luttrell and J.B. Goforth are on hospice care. Brenda Yandel's sister is suffering with laryngitis. Rebecca Williams has been having pain in her legs. Faye Adams needs healing after uh, sustaining a broken leg in a fall. Renee has mobility issues due to problems with her hips and knees. Jean Brightwell is going through physical therapy currently after losing about 25 pounds, suffering with weakness, arthritis, disc inflammation in her spine, and a small aneurysm behind her na nasal cavity. In our other physical needs today, let's keep praying for Brother and Sister Pulliam's granddaughter, Morgan. Let's pray for Meredith, Jimmy Holden, Bobby Larmy, Nicole, Regina Bishop, Shirley Garner, Judy Williams, Sister Mary, and also her daughter, Jennifer, Beth Wheatley's nephew, Dylan, and her granddaughter, Chloe Isaac. We're believing for continued recovery today for Lane Reasons, Rue, Dwayne Moore, Sister Shute's father and Sister Arnold, Michael Turner, Carmen's cousin Shannon, and Carmen's friend Jamie. In our spiritual needs today, let's pray for Jennifer and Brenda's family, Judy and Mike's daughter Jennifer, Judy's brother Lewis, Mark and Caitlin, Charles and Amber Gossett, Beulah's family, Art Chandler, Terry Adams' children, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor, Caroline Sexton's family, Pam Pulliam's children, Tasha's husband Adam and her sister Heather, Carmen's daughter Grace, Cheryl's family member, Barbara Owens, Josiah, Josh, Jamie, Dan, Dalton, Charles, and Dylan. All of these are needing deliverance from addiction issues. Let's continue to pray for our Job Corps students and alumni and also residents from Mingo Residential Care who have been attending services recently. At Greater Vision, we have several family needs to continue to pray about. James and Angela Graham and their family need our prayers today. Debbie Biddick's family, especially her daughters, are needing our prayers. Brother and Sister Woody's family, Grace's best friend's family, Annette and Dave need healing in their marriage. Alicia has special needs in her family today, and we continue to pray for the Stewart family as well. Marsha Moore's son has a court date coming up. On September the 10th, Regina Marlin's son has a court date coming up on September the 14th. Let's continue to pray for them, and we need to pray for the areas affected by Hurricane Ida, the earthquake in Haiti, and, of course, the grossly mishandled situation in Afghanistan, and uh, pray specifically today for those families who uh, lost uh, uh, someone in this um, tragedy over there. Uh, the service members who lost their lives, and uh, so many others who continue to be affected. Let's continue praying for them. Uh, I might mention that um, in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida, the remnants of that storm making their way all the way to New York and New Jersey, uh, tornadoes flooding in that area. Uh, more than 40 people have lost their lives just in those areas due to the remnants of Hurricane Ida. So let's keep praying about that situation, and if you would take to heart this morning, a missionary couple who are in the nation of Namibia, uh, Keith and Beth Eichard, and we appreciate you 
praying for all of these needs this morning. I welcome you today, Kristen, Marsha, Pam, Carmen, Grady, um, Ron. God bless each of you this morning. We thank you for being a part of our uh, morning prayer team. And if you're watching this morning and we have not uh, been able to see you on the screen, uh, your name there, if you'll just leave a comment or throw up some prayer hands or uh, hit the like or love button, then we'll be able to see that you're there and celebrate uh, your participation in this team. And I see Sherman's with us this morning. Thank God for Sherman. Well, I have uh, something exciting to share with you this morning. I'm not much on self-promotion, uh, but I, I want to thank everybody for praying for me over the past year and a half or so because I remember specifically asking for prayer several times as I've been working to complete this work right here. And uh, I received my a copy of uh, this book, Destiny Road, that I've been writing over the past couple of years. Mile markers on Destiny Road, principles, processes, and pitfalls on your way to spiritual fulfillment. And this is available on Amazon.com for uh, the purchase price of $12, and there'll be some tax included in that. You can actually uh, purchase it uh, even uh, less expensive from me if you live in the local area uh, and and want me want to arrange just to pick it up or, or what have you you can get it for twelve dollars straight out if you want to sign the copy and um, and you do not live in this area then it would be fifteen dollars and you can do that through PayPal if you want to direct message me um, you can uh, exchange info with me through direct message and I can make sure that you get your copy now, it'll be 10 to 14 days before I have more product in hand. I actually ordered this uh, copy myself just to look over it and see how it turned out um, from Amazon and paid full price myself for that. But my author copies are on the way. I have a shipment on the way that I'll be able to sign copies for those uh, who desire that for sentimental purposes. And so if you require shipping for that, then I'll just need your address, uh, the payment for it up front, of fifteen dollars, or again, as I said, twelve dollars, no tax included for that. Uh, if you live here in Puxico or somewhere close enough that uh, you could pick up the book in person, so I thank God for each of you praying for me, and I ask you to continue to pray that that book will be a blessing to all who read it. Let's go to the Word of the Lord this morning. We've been reading from the roll call of the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter eleven, and today we continue that in verse seventeen. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. I want you to notice the impact of one person's faith upon uh, other generations connected to them, it being passed down, it being handed down from one to another. And I want to talk to you this morning about that very important idea and of course this is the prayer of every parent and every disciple maker we want to see faith go to the next generation and here we have examples in the word of God of faith going through generations Abraham Isaac Jacob and Joseph and we must also note that uh, there's an impact from acts of our faith that will touch uh, the other generations of our families and those who we have influence upon. When we see Isaac on that altar and then we see him living out his faith later on, we understand that Abraham's faith made a huge impact on Isaac in that moment. We need to be uh, concerned about our own acts of faith and faithfulness that we can pass on to another generation and we need to be thankful for uh, those acts of, of faithfulness and faith that we benefited from from someone else 
along the way. You know, I was thinking about uh, my son, Reagan, uh, who unbelievably is almost 22 years old now, and it seems like, you know, where did the time go? And I know all of you parents out there are, are thinking the same thing this morning. Uh, but Reagan is uh, fifth-generation Pentecostal on his mother's side, fourth-generation on uh, my side of the family, to the best of my knowledge, but fifth generation on his um, on his mother's side. And the way that that happened, though, is interesting because the first person in my wife's family to receive the Holy Ghost and the revelation of Jesus' name baptism was her uh, great uncle. And he came home from a revival service and was still worshiping and and uncontrollably almost you know speaking in tongues and and the spirit fell in that house upon his sister which is my wife's grandmother she received the holy ghost and then it went back up the line because of their witness their parents came into the truth and received this wonderful experience of the baptism of the holy spirit and so uh, there is no limit to the way that god can work it doesn't have to happen in exactly the order of going down through the generation but sometimes our faith can impact a generation uh, that was before us and we can be a blessing in that way in our church currently we have um, uh, two ladies a grandmother and a granddaughter uh, the grandmother came into our church uh, a couple of years ago I guess it's already been almost two years ago and um, been baptized in the name of Jesus filled with the Holy Ghost and now her granddaughter here just a couple of weeks ago um, was baptized in Jesus name and we're believing for her to receive the Holy Ghost at any moment. And now we're believing for that middle generation because we know that our acts of faith, our acts of faithfulness as we live out what God has uh, placed in our hearts, we're going to impact those around us. I'm sure some of you have your own testimonies this morning. If we had time, we could just, we could just share them uh, one with another all morning long. But let's go to prayer today. And let's believe that this act of faithfulness of prayer every morning is having an impact on someone's life. And let's make sure that we're passing on what we're doing to others around us today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for another day. We thank you that you brought us through another work week. Lord, we thank you that your hand has been upon us, that you have strengthened us. And Lord, I know that you're doing great things in the lives of each of our prayer warriors. And I celebrate that this morning. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for your loving kindness that is better than life itself. Lord, our lips will praise you, but not only our lips, but with our hearts, God, we lift our voices to you right now. Hallelujah. We worship your name. We exalt you, O oh God. You are worthy of praise. Holy is your name. We're believing for your will to be done today through our prayers. We're believing for your kingdom to come today through our efforts uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. We believe today for healing, Lord. Hallelujah to be manifest in different one's lives as we begin to call their names out in prayer. We believe for pain to leave Ron Fowler's body right now. We pray, God, for healing of his back right now. We pray for Aaron Payne with this tumor in her stomach. Lord, you are able to work a miracle for her right now. We believe for your touch. We pray for Brother Steve today, going into surgery this morning. We pray, God, your hand upon him, his family today. We believe, God, for good results. We believe for everything to go well today. In Jesus' name, we pray for Timothy Axton. Lord, keep your hand upon him, upon his family today, Lord, as he's going through more procedures. We pray, God, your hand upon them today. We pray for Judy's daughter, Jennifer, as she has a sinus surgery coming up at the end of this month. Lord, we believe for you to be with her. We pray for Pastor Godby's daughter, Lord, as she's in the hospital yet today. We pray your touch upon her, Lord, healing for her that she could be home with her uh, nine-week-old baby, God, moving that family today. We pray for Aubrey today as she continues to recover from her foot surgery. And I pray, God, that that you would uh, continue to give her strength. I thank you for your touch upon me, Lord. You've been so good in helping me to progress so rapidly and recover so quickly. We pray for peace and comfort today for 
Dennis Lewis and his daughter and their families, Lord, today as they're mourning the loss of, of Cindy, so precious to them. We pray for uh, Carmen and, and Grace today and their family as they are grieving the loss of Erling today. In Jesus' name, Lord, comfort their hearts. Uh, those who are suffering with COVID right now, we pray your touch upon them. Lord, for Matt Perkins, for Carmen's friend Corey, for Brandy McCoy, for Bishop Bill Jones and Teddy Hunsaker, for Don Marchbanks and Pastor Lance Wicked as he continues to recover. And Lord, for all those at Parkway Church that have been affected by this recent outbreak and those in our local area, the churches that have had to cancel services, we pray, God, for this plague to pass over. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we believe for healing for those with stomach issues today. Touch Olivia and Terry and Aubrey. We pray for those with kidney problems today. Jim Connor and Brenda's friend, Lee Young, Aubrey and Loren. Brother Virgil Pullian's brother, Lord, we believe for healing of his kidneys, healing of his liver, healing of his pancreas today. We believe for healing of the liver for Jamie Joe this morning. We believe for miracles to be worked in each one today who is battling cancer. Not only Brother Cummins, but so many others today. Kathy and Lydia and Philip. Christy today needs your touch. Pastor Mickey Lewis, David Harris, Michael Boland, Alicia Piero, Diane Escher and Claire, Marsha Moore's friends, grandparents, and John Fitzgerald, Kim Stinson and Kathy Burks, Robert Wicks and Dwayne Lewis, uh, Terry's friend, Dennis Phelps, Sylvia Laramore, Lisa Workman, Brother Kirk and Ari Bowers, Edie Percival, and Del Bishop and Jerry Williams, we speak healing right now. Hallelujah. By faith in your name, Lord. Oh, God, it is your name that will, will bring an end to these afflictions today. And we give you the praise and the glory for it. All power is in your name. All power in heaven and earth invested in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for that truth today. We believe for these children, Lord, who are suffering with cancer, Lorelei and Jenna and Tucker. We believe for Abel with PKU syndrome and Tano with spina bifida. We pray for these children with heart issues, baby Brantley and baby Elsie. We pray for Abram today with this rare disorder that he has. We pray, God, for Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach. Lord, for healing of juvenile diabetes. We know that you are able we pray for the adults who are suffering with diabetes today. Touch Tim Workman and Emily Stanley. We pray for Cheryl Chance and Brother Pulliam and J.R. and whatever his other health issue is today, God. We believe for your touch in that situation as well. We pray for Terry's friend, Marsha. I believe for my healing today along with these others. We believe for healing of Parkinson's today for Beulah and Ron and Russ and for Tim. We believe for healing of MS for Brother DeLott and Brother March. Let your strength be upon them today, God, as they're doing your work. Hallelujah. In the midst of affliction, we know, God, that you are able. We believe for Gerald and Leslie and Lana and their families. You see the great suffering, Lord, that they've experienced due to dementia. Tina's mother needing healing today after suffering from stroke. Grady and his family need your touch. We pray for Sheila, Lord, that you would touch her mind today. Oh, God, touch her body right now. We pray for Brother Ron Buford, Lord, for his blood pressure to stabilize, to come back into perfect control. We pray for the pain that he experiences in his hands due to carpal tunnel. In Jesus' name, those with heart issues, we speak healing right now. Let your virtue flow right now, God, through our prayers for Cheryl and for, for Kenny this morning, for Brother Sullivan's Father, in Jesus' name, these who have lung and respiratory problems, we pray that you would move for them. Robbie and Kendra and Bonnie and Cheryl, those with back pain, Jenny and Tammy, Britt and James, Terry and Michael and Sister Dixon's pastor, we believe for their healing. We believe for baby Macy this morning, for Donna Luttrell and J.B. Goforth, for Brenda's sister who's suffering with laryngitis, Rebecca Williams, uh, that the pain would leave her legs right now. Faye Adams, Lord, that she would receive strength for recovery in Jesus' name. We pray for Renee right now. Lord, for these problems she's experienced for so long in her hips and knees, you are able, God. We pray against arthritis in your name, for Jean Brightwell, for healing of disc inflammation. Lord, for your strength for her to recover as she goes through 
physical therapy. We pray, God, for Brother and Sister Pulliam's granddaughter, Morgan, for Meredith, for Jimmy, for Bobby and Nicole, for Regina and Shirley and Mary, for Jennifer today. We pray for Beth's nephew, Dylan, and for her granddaughter, Chloe, today. We believe for continued recovery for Carmen's friend, Jamie, for Carmen's cousin, Shannon, for Michael Turner and Sister Arnold, for Sister Shute's father, for Rue and for Dwayne and for Lane Reasons today. We believe, God, that you're moving in every spiritual need. We will not give up, Lord, on these souls today. We know it's your desire for them to be saved, for your word tells us that it is not your will that any should perish. It's not your will that we would give in to discouragement today or disillusionment. And you see each one of them, their names that we've called out in this prayer gathering this morning, Lord, and our family, those among our friends today, those that we work with, those that we go to school with, those that are close friends and those who are just loose associations, God, but yet we have influence upon them. And we pray that our prayers would go beyond our own personal influence today and accomplish the work that we cannot do. Oh, hallelujah. Move in their lives today. Draw by your spirit. Heal our backslidings, Lord. Let revival spring forth in every corner of the globe today. We pray for revival, God, in the most difficult places, places like Afghanistan. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, for revival in Namibia today. We pray your hand of protection upon Keith and Beth Eichert, our missionaries there. God, that you would open doors for them. In Jesus' name, we believe, God, for you to move in these family needs today for James and Angela and their family. We pray, God, that they would be drawn back once again to your house, that they would be able to give all of their issues to you, whatever discouragements that they have, Lord, that you would move in those situations. We pray for Debbie's family. We pray for the Woody family, for Grace's best friend and her family, for Annette and Dave. Lord, for healing in their marriage, for Alicia and for the Stewart family this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray for Marcia's son, for Regina's son, Lord, who have court dates coming up. In Jesus' name, move, Lord, on their behalf. We pray, God, for those affected by Hurricane Ida. Lord, for those who have lost someone dear to them. Lord, from the effects of this storm or, or from the effects of the Haitian earthquake, we pray for the rebuilding efforts. Oh, God, that you would move and that you would provide for the needs of your people today. We pray for those in Afghanistan who are trapped behind enemy lines today. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, that you would just rip the scales off the eyes of so many who are blinded. Oh, God, by the God of this world, we pray that revival would take place. You revive, your presence is greater than any political force, any terrorist organization, any unwise uh, leadership that we might uh, have to deal with, God, because you are the great king over all the earth, and we believe for your glory to fill the earth today. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and glory for all that you're doing, and we give you thanks right now in Jesus' name mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying with me all week long. Let's come back on Monday morning and do this again. I'll be taking a moment here as I go off the air and review any requests you may have submitted while we've been praying, and I'll be sure to pray for those needs along with you and, uh, and also celebrate any victory reports that you might have shared today. Why don't you share this video with someone else who needs an uplifting word today? Amen. Um, comment on the videos. Do something just to draw attention to this prayer ministry, and I know that God will bless you for that. I'll see you Monday morning, Lord willing, at 7.30 a.m.